Hi, so we're ready for another uh, lesson in watercolor painting and this time I, um, I think I shall um, show you how I paint uh, spruce trees. Spruce trees? What are they? Well, another name for spruce trees is Christmas trees. Um, and I've been out and about and some photographing some, uh, some Christmas trees. So here you've got an example of a, a Christmas tree. It's on the edge of a, um, a plantation. It's uh, quite a nice tree. It's well built up. It's, uh, yeah, one, one can see how it's built up. And th that, that is important that you know how these things that you're going to paint are built up. Um, if you've never seen a Christmas tree and you want to paint a Christmas tree, then you <laughs> you've got a bit of a problem. But uh, if you've seen one and looked at it and studied it and see where the, the, the stem is and where the branches are and, and how they are built up and where are the more branches and fewer branches and things like that, then it's quite easy to paint a Christmas tree. But before I start painting it, I think I shall draw it with a, with a pencil because it's um, much easier to, 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 to find out how things um, hang together by drawing it first with a, with a pencil and then by the side of it I'll show you how I paint it. When I uh, start drawing such a tree, the first thing I decide is how tall the tree is. You'll find out in a minute why I do this, but um, I, I put two pencil marks here and I decide my tree is going to be as high as, as the area between the two points here. Then I start by, by drawing the stem of the tree, the tree trunk, um, which is very, very thin at, uh, for, for such a little tree, from the top down. And I don't draw it all the way down. You'll see why in a minute. When I look at the tree, I can see it's got some small branches right at the top, and they sort of um, go from the um, from the tree trunk, from the stem, out towards the sides. Another thing which you will notice on a, a Christmas tree is that the the branches are sort of bunched in areas. I mean, they they are in layers. You've got one layer here with five or six small branches, and they've got another one here, with, and here, and here. And further down you go, so of course, the, the branches will get longer from the stem, uh, go further and further away from the stem. And when you get to about here, you will notice that um, you cannot see the stem anymore, because there are so many branches now that the whole thing covers over the, the stem and that disappears in all these branches which again are getting longer and longer the further down the tree you go. In the end they, are, they can be quite long at the bottom here and in the middle here where you expect to see the stem, the tree trunk, it disappears. So this is a spruce or a Christmas tree. But there is another little thing which um, I want to uh, explain to you and that is when I've drawn it once with this tone of, of, of pencil then I start drawing it again with an even darker tone. But what I'm trying to do here is to make it much darker in the middle because that is here in this area here where you're looking through most branches and you cannot see um, out in the edges here perhaps they're a bit lighter because there is not quite so many branches here but in the middle here there are a lot of branches here and also some of the smaller branches up at the top can also be made a little bit darker and in this way you um, produce uh, a depth in the tree the light branches out in the side here they seem to be further back in the tree and the darker ones here they seem to come much more forward and you get a depth in the tree and this principle I will also use when I start painting my tree with watercolor to uh, paint the uh, Christmas tree I use two brushes I have a, a rigger brush which is a number two rigger brush uh, which gives me some very thin lines uh, lines easy to control and then I have a round number 12 brush 
here, which um, which gives me quite a uh, thick line where I can uh, fill in the tree with, with colour. Um, the colour which I'm going to use is um, is a dark green, and in the in the paints that I've got, I've got um, uh, Payne's grey here. I've got the bluish Payne's grey here, and I've got a cadmium yellow. And there, these are the two colours I'm going to mix to get the colour for the Christmas tree. Okay, so I start with a little bit of Payne's grey, put it onto here, and then I take a little bit of cadmium yellow and mix it in and that gives me a dark green colour. Perhaps I shouldn't make it all that dark at the moment because I'm going to paint the tree twice and the next time I'm going to paint it's going to be even darker than this colour so I've got to be careful that I don't, don't uh, paint it too dark from the start. The next thing will be to take my um, paper and my, my pencil and to just put two marks on it so I know how high this tree is going to be. Then I start with my rigger brush. Okay, I take my rigger brush, fill it up with the paint and I go to the top of, uh, to the top mark and I make a stem for my tree. And then I start painting the small branches from the sides. Perhaps this could be a little bit longer here. Okay, they, the further down the tree I go, the longer, the further go the branches from the from the tree. And then when I get to around here, the whole thing falls completely together. And I take my bigger brush now. Looks like I have to make a little bit more paint and start painting the tree with some some bigger, broader strokes. The important thing here is that it's out at the edges here that I also show some of the spikes of the tree. Okay. And this is the tree painted the first time. Now I will let this tree, this painting, dry. I can use a, a hair dryer here. You see here, when I use a hairdryer, that the the paint uh, becomes lighter, and this is a, um, a thing that everybody who paints watercolor uh, finds out after a time. That wet watercolor is quite deep in color, and when it dries, becomes lighter. So I knew it will become lighter. So now I can mix an even darker color as a, and then paint it onto this. And I start again with my rigger brush. I take the rigger brush again to start with that because I go to the top of the tree and paint a few extra darker branches here. And you can see that if I can still see some of the lighter branches and paint some of the darker branches, then I'm beginning to get a little bit of depth in my tree. Then when I come here, I continue with the dark colour. I paint some of the branches which I mean are further forward in the tree but I still leave some of the lighter branches which I painted before and by in, in this way I sort of get two two colors on top of each other and hopefully my tree ends up with a little bit of depth what I want to do now is to paint another tree by the side of this first one. Still with the same color, uh, strength of color which I used for the first tree here. So I get a, a dark here and standing by the side of the first one here the two trees run into each other so they the two colors can merge here and 
Okay, perhaps the second tree is a little bit smaller than the first. And perhaps one more, just to um, illustrate this effect, because you will see this, this is just halfway through the painting. I'll paint another little tree here. Also with the same strength of colour. It doesn't really matter if, if you get all these um, spikes sticking out of the tree. It's, uh, if it looks good, then it's all right. Now I'm going to let the, these, these two trees uh, dry with a hair dryer here. And now I paint them as I did with the first tree, a little bit darker. Now they are dry so I can get another layer of paint on. This is to get the depth into the tree. You can see that at the top of the tree where I need some sharp fine lines. Then I use the tip of the rigger brush but when I get further down the tree I just press the rigger brush against the paper and I get a random pattern of colour. The darker colour here makes the foliage come forward. But now the interesting thing is, watercolour is a medium which is very good at painting things in mist and fog and things like that. So now if I take this colour which I just, just used and water it down a bit until I get a very light colour, then I can, this, I can use this colour for the trees that are standing in the background. And these trees are only painted once. So there's no, you shouldn't go around and painting them two or three times and building the, the strength of the colour up. They've got to be painted just once because they've got to go into the background of this painting here. And you can see, because these trees are standing behind the ones in the front so you don't have to paint so much. That is the sun. <laughs> this is the, the really good thing about it. You can paint these trees very, very quickly. They are standing in the background and they are just a shadow of a tree. And the effect of these very faint trees, or rather trees painted with very faint paint, against the trees painted with the stronger paint gives a very nice effect of depth amongst the trees. In a Christmas tree forest or a spruce forest or whatever you want to call it. While I've got your attention here, I would like to tell you about my ebook. If you're interested in learning a few more techniques, watercolor techniques, and you like the way I um, present things and teach, uh, teach things, then you can go to my website and um, you can have a look at my, my e-book. It's a book written specially with um, beginners in mind. The book uh, contains 23 chapters which concern themselves with uh, landscapes and water, the sea. Uh, the book is now improved with extra illustrations and video clips and it costs uh, 15 US dollars or 13 euros. Payment is by PayPal and I send the book by email. So go to my um, ebook webpage, uh, the address will come here soon, and you'll see the, the content of the chapters. Then uh, decide if you want to, to buy it. Here you have uh, three illustrations that you can use to practice painting Christmas trees. And uh, in a moment there will be a little gallery of some of the paintings with Christmas trees or spruce trees that I have uh, painted. Hi, 